So we weren't kind to the nothing year one, but second time's a charm. Or is it? Goedendag, we are DHR me. Dirty homies reviewing modern electronics. <laughs> All right. So Rowan, you've tested the nothing year two for a while now. I was wondering, the nothing year one, when we talk about noise cancelling, was rated kind of average at tier C. So what has changed? It's gotten better. Uh, and that's kind of the theme across the board. But since we're talking about transparency and ANC, both of them have gone up a tier. So the transparency is one tier better. And we have a list of six tiers that we compare with. So the ANC has improved by one tier and mm. the transparency has gone up by one tier. So definite improvement. There's, there's the comparison versus the nothing year one, but there's also the comparison of how does it do in general. I think it's pretty good. The transparency has improved a lot. Very good levels. It's fine for quietish environments, you know, with just voices or low end hum. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they've made the choice of cutting out the low end in transparency mode. So if you're outside, it's good because you won't be able to hear engine sounds. But if there are coffee machine drilling, grinding sounds, those are still left in. So mm -hmm. it's it also gives you this kind of strange effect where you're hearing something but not nothing everything if you know what i mean i get you i get you don't worry <laughs> so i'm looking at the tier list that we have right so we're saying tier b for noise cancelling i'm seeing it in the company of the original airpods pro for example gen one i'm seeing the soundcore liberty four there so there are a couple of interesting competitors right there we are, we also have the oneplus buds pro 2 which was also pretty recently released yeah 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 compared to the uh, if you're talking about the anc the mids and higher end frequencies are a bit too prominent in general so even though you say the anc is better i want to emphasize that it's not very comfortable it's not very mm. pleasant let's say that's a better word because it tends to amplify those high end frequencies and mm. again if you're out and about you can't choose the noises you have right like you don't want to only switch off air conditioning units because let's be honest, $50 earbuds do that now. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't do very well with higher pitch sounds. So yeah. it's, but it is a huge improvement over Gen 1. Let me be okay. very clear. Like Gen 1 was, had a lot of problems, including mm -hmm. balance issues. Um, this is way better. But so if you're in a stable, low end engine noise or air conditioning, it'll do fine. But, but interesting what you mentioned, right? So if you're out and about, probably not great because you can't really control what kind of frequencies are going to come in. But when you said out and about, what it reminded me of is the wind. Today's a pretty windy day. Yeah. Uh, what can it do? Get, does, is there some kind of wind noise reduction mode? There is no separate mode in the app. Uh, there is an ANC mode there's no separate wind noise reduction and in my experience and of course wind noise is not as predictable uh, you may have another experience if you test these don't shoot us but you can leave a nice comment down below uh, the wind noise isn't cancelled out very well so when i was on the bike or i was walking around in an open place as you'll see in the mic test there was quite a bit of wind and it wasn't very pleasant so of course if better seal you have the less that that's going to be a problem but the ANC and transparency modes don't deal great with wind noise for me. No. Okay. And then if I'm looking at the tier list that we have for transparency, it came in at tier A. It's in the company of, for example, one of our favorites, the Earphone Air Pro 3. That, that's pretty good. The Oppo Enco X2. Um, what else do we have? Sony Link Buds S. So they're just below the AirPods, which always dominate the transparency mode category for us, right, Rowan? So the AirPods Pro 2, the AirPods Pro OG, they're both up there tier S. And then below that, we have the Nothing Ear 2. Were they pleasant enough for you to use out and about to really hear your surroundings? Yes, I would use them. I would use them. Uh, okay. I, and usually we say, you know, if it's not great, we say we could use them in a pinch. Uh, I would use them for longer than that, you know. Maybe mm. a short conversation. I would have it with the nothing you're in. Yeah. Yes. Except for the, I'll talk about the fit when we get to it, but yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk about calls when we get to it. But one thing that, you know, reminds me uh, when I use buds a lot and, and, and I'm in a call 
at the office, for example, there are certain brands, <coughs> one more, that uh, will not let you change noise cancelling when you're on a call. It'll by default go into ANC and I actually prefer to be, oh, sorry, we'll go into transparency and I prefer to be in ANC, right? So can you do that with the... Uh, yeah, you can. Too? You can. You can just long press it and it goes into, it switches between ANC and transparency mode. So that's good. Nice. Nice. So yeah, maybe we can talk about those controls, right? So you just mentioned it there's this uh yeah. pinch or hold or all of that maybe explain a little bit how that works because it is different than the previous yeah. model yeah and that's actually i'm not very happy about that uh, i am and i'm not so let me explain uh these don't have touch controls so they've copied apple basically mm -hmm. and they have pinch controls so you long pinch to switch anc modes like we said whether you're mm -hmm. on a call or not uh, single pinch is play pause um you know you can do track control but they don't have volume control because they don't have touch control. Well, they don't have volume control like nothing year one did, uh, where you could literally swipe on the earbud and uh, you know you could raise and lower volume. That was really good. But they've decided to move to pinch, which means they have to come up with these convoluted controls for volume, which is like pinch once and then hold it on the left, pinch once and hold on the right to increase volume. Yeah. So it's very convoluted. But I'll be very honest, uh, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and I'm, I kind of got used to those controls. So... If okay. that's the only earbuds you have and you want volume controls, I think you can make it work. Yeah, I, I think we make it a bit more confusing than it is, right? For most people, I think we go through buds a lot and we forget or we switch too often. But you're, you're, I think you're totally right that once these are your buds and you're using it, you won't get that confused. But to me, it sounded a bit odd that you need to pinch and hold and then pinch once and yeah. twice and it does different things. So, But yeah. you're saying you can get used to it. And, and I would maybe take a step back on that because I don't think it's that easy for people because this is A, not enabled out of the box. So out of the box, the volume controls are disabled, which is weird. So you have to really be kind of somebody who goes into the app. I know people who get products and never open the app even once. They get headphones mm -hmm. and don't download the app. So yes, there's the people like that. And on top of that, there's this weird gesture. So yeah, that, yeah. I would say that's probably the only step back on nothing here too is yeah. the volume controls hmm. do you know which uh, earbuds also doesn't come with an app a pretty mainstream set of earbuds apple AirPods. yes the airpods yeah. and I, so every time i see carl pay and their product marketing and presentations and i'm i'm looking at these buds i think they have a lot of let's say respect and love for apple and their design i'm thinking how much does this remind you of the airpods pro especially now that they have pinch controls as well and so you're talking about the airpods pro and how much they remind me of the airpods pro they do not remind me of the airpods pro at all i don't know why i, I just feel okay. they're very different you know airpods pro the stems around it these are flat uh, of course they've copied the in-ear design because apple has done all the research and all mm -hmm. these other companies are lifting off of that research uh, comfort wise they do remind me a little of the AirPods Pro okay. uh, because it's the same design essentially but other than that I don't think anybody would confuse these with the AirPods Pro even if they saw them in your ears no yeah that's for sure I, I, I really like the look of the nothing very unique transparent uh, look actually much nicer than the AirPods since they're pretty generic uh, at the moment <laughs> Uh, like I've mentioned in one of our live streams, check out DHR Me Live if you wanna if you wanna see us talk more off the cuff. But anyway, over there, I was in London quite recently and just you know, was observing all the earbuds. And I've got to say, I've seen a couple of nothing earbuds, but mostly AirPods. So anything beats being AirPods uh, at the moment. And if you want to make a a design uh, statement for yourself, anyway. Let's uh, let's move on to, you were mentioning comfort. So these are comfortable in your opinion because they remind you of the AirPods? Yeah, so these are not a deep insertion like Jabra style, but more like a shallow insertion. Uh, okay. well, not etymotic, not Jabra, but like one of those shallow things, very AirPods-like. But okay. somehow they don't stay in my ear as well. And of course, this is subjective, so let's not spend too much time on this. But especially in my left ear, I kept noticing that after about an hour, they would kind of start falling off. So these are on the comfortable side of the spectrum. So okay. that's good. But also they are 
not as secure as many other earbuds we've used. Okay. Do you get sufficient tips in the box as well? I will move on to the next question. <laughs> I never checked because I'm a medium so I never need to check. Yeah, same here. But I Usually think, the default ones fit me as well. I think there is not there's nothing special on that. But, okay. Uh, editor throw it on screen. <laughs> Would you dare use them for workouts? Nothing too vigorous I'd say because they tend to kind Let's of See what you did there. Like Let's yeah. What? <laughs> what? No. Nothing too Oh, uh, nothing to look. I'm punning without knowing it. I'm so good, but yeah, I wouldn't use it for anything too vigorous uh, because of, as I mentioned, after an, uh, about thirty minutes, the, my left the left earbud tends to fall off for me. Mm, okay, but does it have an IP rating, Kevin? Does it? I believe it does. I've seen the specs. I think it was IP fifty four on the buds and IP fifty five on the case. That's pretty good. Eh? I don't. Think I know. Seen any cases no. that are that high? No. No, mostly cases are uh, totally ignored in the IP rating scale. It's usually the buds. Kind of makes sense. Those are the ones that are going to uh, take the bulk of uh, water or dust. But yeah, I mean, you take a case and you take it to the beach. It can get some dust or in a park, right? So it's very possible. So nice to see that for sure. I think that's a, a great move from uh, from nothing. About the case design, I, what I've read and heard a little bit is that apparently it gets scratched easier than the previous model, but not entirely sure if you've gotten any scratches on him yet. I'm not sure if it gets scratched easier than the previous model because I have the previous model here. Yeah. Um, and we did use it quite a bit, right? At least a couple of months. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, full time and then off and on after that. So the yeah. previous model isn't that scratched up. Um, this one, I used it at least a couple of weeks, as I said. Also doesn't seem as scratched up, but that's the thing with plastic and clear plastic, right? It It is going to get, even if it's not more scratched than anything else, it'll be more visible. So True. And speaking of scratching, um, I heard there was uh, some... I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna explain this to me. I didn't actually read into it too too much, but insect crawling in your ear. What? Yeah, yeah. That's oh, that's that. the marketing material of nothing. If you see, they have these weird insects that are I don't know. Yeah, the, the beetles, beetles or, or cockroaches yeah. or whatever they are. Yeah, carry, <laughs> carrying these <laughs> weird uh, products. I guess that's a way of standing out. That's fine. But also, many of the tones they have are just outright weird. Like going to transparency is a that okay. that's what a transparency going to transparency sounds like and good we can show off the Sennheiser profile mic here but um, other than that yeah the sounds are like these creepy crawly you know that kind of <laughs> it's like okay. weird sounds that uh, happen in but your so, ear so, so this is a specific feature on the nothing ear too this wasn't on the one I don't remember this being on the one at all and I've used it oh that's a good one I don't know okay so this is yeah I guess this is a feature I think so. nothing here too yeah feature yeah indeed yeah. okay interesting to see parts of their marketing material be used for uh, uh, for how they've designed the sound uh, sound effects okay is there anything else that uh, you would want to talk about in terms of build quality or materials or comfort well um, they still have that fidget spinner dimple uh, it is smaller. The case is smaller than the Nothing Ear 2. So that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the Nothing Ear 1. Um, and we also have battery tests. We did some battery tests with this one. Um, there are two codecs it comes with. Again, we'll talk about codecs more in the sound section. But mm -hmm. on LHDC, um, which is the high res codec, these lasted only short of four hours. So three hours, 50 minutes is what I got. And on SBC, I just got about 30 minutes more at 4 hours 26. So it's actually under the promised time or whatever the rated time is from nothing. And I basically just played music with the ANC on pretty much all the time at a comfortable listening volume, not nothing too crazy. One song on yeah. repeat. And yeah, I think the battery life was a little bit underwhelming for me. Um, if there's one thing that nothing year two could improve is definitely the battery life. I think they can do yeah. better. We are seeing other buds do much better than this. Yeah, just to finish off the topic on battery, Type C charging, wireless charging, all on board, right? Yes, and okay. yes. Nice. 
Okay, let's talk about the app that you get. Uh, I heard it's improved and it looks pretty cool with nice animations and all of that. So what can it do, uh, Rowan? I'm not sure that nothing year one got this update as well, but you can get a kind of a EQ now. Um, there's okay. a mid, bass and high, and you have kind of three stops on those three parameter, parameters. Mm -hmm. It does all the basics. I mean, there's nothing crazy that's in there. Um, you can ch you can change uh, ANC modes. You do have a personify feature, or at least I think that's the JBL branding. I'm not sure this is the nothing branding I'm talking about, but there's a feature to scan your ear canal and compensate for ANC and sound quality accordingly. Yeah. We'll come to sound quality in a bit. And then there was also the addition of multipoint, which the first one didn't have, right? So how's that been for you? Stable? Functional? It's been okay. I haven't uh, done anything crazy with it, but it works. Yeah. Uh, pause on one and, uh, sorry, yeah, pause on the first device and play on the next and it works fine. And can you pull connection? I didn't try that. You didn't try that. I uh, think you can. We... Hold on. Let me try that right away because yeah it did pull nice so nice. it does pull uh, it's not in multi-point mode right now so okay maybe that has something to do with it but i could successfully pull Connection. from a previously nice. paired device that is a underrated feature by the way if you have more than two devices you're gonna really come across this multi-point yeah. is not multi-point it's dual device so yes. everybody's lying to you it's two point <laughs> it's a line, the distance between two points. Nothing ear two can connect to two devices. Nice. So is there also a device list, by the way, in the app? Can you see your connected devices? Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. And can you do anything with them? Yeah. So basically it looks something like this. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Or right. we'll throw up a screen recording. Yeah. So it's a nothing phone one. I think you can disconnect from one. You can connect okay. to another. Cool. Um, and yeah, it shows you all the devices. Yeah, it's nice. You can do that. Okay. And just to close off this section, right? Can it also do smart pause? Yes. Will it, it pause audio? And yes. you can also disable that, which is a really handy feature, okay. especially if you're testing audio or battery life for a long time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. No, that's nice to hear. And then what we'll do before going to sound quality is talk about phone calls. That's yeah. something you and I do a lot of. So how were they for calls? I the think they back? were okay. Um, of course, we leave a short sample right now and longer samples for patrons and YouTube members. Uh, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. But I think they were okay. It again struggled with the wind for some reason and high pitch sounds somehow it tends mm -hmm. to accentuate. But I would very much use them for phone calls. They were fine. Nice. Okay. So the combination of multi-point together with or dual point and uh, and a good microphone. Nice. But then again, something else I use a lot on phone calls is volume control. Does it work? Because not all buds that say they have volume control, they work on audio, but they don't work on phone calls. Does it work for phone calls? It works. It works fine nice. once you enable it. Yeah. Nice. But it's a bit what about shady, isn't it? Because you're tapping and then holding and... I don't know if you forget to hold, but you just tap, you're basically hanging up. So it's, it's, it's yeah. a bit, <laughs> yeah. As I said, volume controls, not great. Living on the edge. Okay. And final question on this is, is there mute? Can you mute them from your earbuds? I couldn't find cannot? any way to mute them. Shall we move to the sound quality part? Yes. When it comes to sound quality, the Nothing Ear 2 has dwarfed the Nothing Ear 1 completely. So... Keep that in mind, but starting with the features, the custom hearing test did a very interesting job. You can choose to apply the test to different degrees and by far, this was one of the tests that had the biggest impact on sound. Now we've seen tests like this before, Soundcore, Oppo, One More, JBL, almost everyone has like a feature like this. Watch out for Apple's next revolutionary 2026 feature. But that aside, we've never really liked many of these tests because they always tend to boost higher frequencies 
because let's be honest, we're old and after a certain age, higher frequencies need boosting. But if the drivers react poorly to that boosting, the whole sound goes a bit off. So yeah, nothing's custom sound feature does things a bit differently. It clearly identified that I had issues with my higher frequencies, but perceptibly, the difference was applied to the lower frequencies. And instead of boosting higher frequencies, it dropped lower frequencies. And nothing about the higher frequencies actually seemed to change. It's a little mental trick that nothing's doing since it probably can't push the higher end anymore. Maybe the drivers can't handle it. I don't know, man, but it sounded fine. And I'm not sure if this is doing what it's supposed to, but it kind of achieves the same effect. So I think this is an intentional thing. The good part is you can apply how much of this gets applied. We chose the recommended setting and that worked well for us. There's also a three band spider shaped EQ, which helps adjust certain sounds, which we still prefer. Now, other than that, how do the nothing year two sound? Well, pretty good. First off, there's a clear bass bump when ANC gets activated. So keep that in mind. It can get very loud and it's not a warm sound as such. It reminded me a little of the Sennheiser IE 200s, especially in the treble. There's a certain whooshy nature here that it's fine, but it affects cymbal sounds and the like. Here I still prefer the Oppo Enco X2 on the classic preset. There is much more detail on the Oppo and it's flirting with sibilance without quite committing to it, just how we like it. The bass on the other hand is solid all the way down to the lowest frequencies. And the mids are very enjoyable and have a realistic-ish timbre to them, I'd say, especially on voices. But I did find that distortion was a bit smoothened out, you know, without any of those jagged edges that pierce your ear, making it more pleasant than it should be. For rock and metal, I prefer the OnePlus Buds 2 Pro. Man, I love the OnePlus Buds 2 Pro for sound. If only they did some other stuff better. Check out our review of them here. For sound alone, our ranking would be number one, the Oppo Enco X2 and the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. Both are very good. Second, surprise, Samsung Buds 2 Pro. Third, the Nothing Ear 2 and the JBL Live Pro 2 would tie with the nothing but it has slightly poorer resolution but we like everything else about the JBL. So go crazy in the comments on that one. All right the moment has come Ron. Should people buy or not buy the nothing here too? Give me your reasons why you would buy the nothing here too. I think they stand out on a few aspects. The design I mean they're really unique. Not many earbuds out there that look like this, feel like this. Mm. That was the nothing year one, by the way. I'm talking about the nothing year two, <laughs> which look identical. So good design, good sound quality, decent ANC, decent transparency. So they do well on performance. Phone calls, I would use them for phone calls, possible, definitely. Those are the reasons I would buy the nothing year two for. Okay. And why would you not spend those 150 euros or dollars on the nothing year two? Well, first off, you can't get the best out of these unless you have a phone that supports LHDC. So that's kind of a letdown. Battery life didn't quite live up to what nothing has been promising. So it's not bad, but always remember with these products that at some point the battery is going to start degenerate. And then soon when it hits two hours, it's not going to be as much fun as it is when it's four hours. And the volume controls, that's so annoying that volume mm. controls are not straightforward. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. You've been having nothing in your two ears, and we've been... DHRME. Namaste. Namaste.